Midnight Burger will always be free to listen to, but it's not free to make. So please consider supporting us by subscribing on Supporting Cast, Patreon, or Apple Podcasts. For early access, ad-free shows, exclusive content, and our enduring gratitude, just follow any of the links in the show notes for this episode. Looking to get out of the ads and back to the story? Fable and Folly Plus is a new way to support the creators you love. The podcast you're listening to right now and more than 60 others can be heard ad-free for as little as $4 a month by visiting fableandfolly.com slash plus. And now you'll start to see Fable and Folly Network shows are offering bonus content to all existing and new supporters. Find exclusive new episodes from shows like Where the Stars Fell, The Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program, and Civilized. Plus, early access to new episodes of Midnight Burger, all still entirely ad-free. Of course you didn't show. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I wasn't thinking at all. I'm standing here on this deserted planet, and when I look up in the sky, mm, I can see my problem. We met on the outskirts of a dark nebula. You called it something stupid, and I called it the Shiliac. I told you the Shiliac was a frozen monster that slept inside every Vapian. The more our emotions took over, the more the Shiliac thawed. And if it ever woke, it would take us over completely. <laughs> it was all the Shiliac with you, Leif. Every minute. A little more time with you and there would have been no going back. I'd never be in control again. I guess what surprised me is um, that I wouldn't have cared. I think when I was with you, all I wanted was for the monster to take over. I wanted it to swallow me whole. I wanted to be a criminal in love. On the run... (laughs) I wanted to be disintegrated. But I can't do that because Vapians survive. It's our only job. Just surviving can be a nightmare because of all the things you have to deny yourself just to live. Not much of a life if all you do is survive. (laughs) I fell in love with you. It almost killed me. So now I'll go back to just dying slowly. Goodbye, Leif. I'm an amazing shot with this gun and I'm in a terrible mood. My hands are up. Bert, Bert? Hey. He sent you instead. No. Actually, he left me a rambling message. (laughs) He said he was supposed to meet you here, but that he wasn't going to show, and I... Well, I 
chartered a ship and headed here. Why? Not sure. What the hell is this planet? Developmental designate. You met Leif here? I was trying to unload some stolen core stabilizers, if you can believe it, and uh, <laughs> his ship crashed, landed right over up across that ridge. How romantic. Isn't it? To hear him tell it, you were lucky to get out alive, Verge. I know. Which doesn't help. <laughs> no, it doesn't. What are you going to do? I don't know. I need to stay out of Loftrax's territory, which is one and a half galaxies now, so, uh... I guess it's off to Triangulum with all the rest of the Deeply Strange. And when they push into Triangulum? I don't know. It's not like there's only three galaxies in the universe. Out that way, between those two stars? If you keep going, there's one that's not too far. Cryptesia. I heard a rumor that the Tads were working on the biggest warp gate they've ever built. So big it could send you all the way out to Cryptesia, a whole new galaxy where no one's heard of me. Maybe I can stay alive long enough for them to build it. I bet no one knows what a Vapian is out there. I could be someone else if I wanted to. I could have a pick of a new name. <laughs> what do you think? What should my new name be? Freya. Freya. Titmittens. Freya Titmittens. <laughs> sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Verge, I offered before to take you to Segeus. I can still do that. I could guarantee your safety there. No. No. I, I, I don't think so. Why not? Y you know our two planets used to be friends? I know. We shared a lot with each other. Segeus went on to be a squeaky clean utopia, and we... <laughs> well, we just blew ourselves the fuck up, didn't we? <laughs> and when you did blow yourselves the fuck up, we didn't do enough to help the ones who were left. I'm trying to remedy that. I can't hide behind someone else. It takes the meaning out of it. I... I don't know what you mean. People hunt me, Berts. I have always been hunted since I was a kid. You don't know what it's like to be hunted. I have to take a deep breath every time I walk through a door. Who knows what's on the other side? Every time there's a sudden noise, my hand ends up on my gun without even thinking about it. And then, on top of that, you ever been pointed at? You're walking through a public square. Someone gets too close a look at you and they point. And then, you see everyone whispering. You see the news of you being spread like a virus through the crowd. Before long, the whole crowd will be looking at you. And all you did was walk down the street. All you did was exist. That sounds terrible. Ah, it is. But the constant looking over my shoulder, the looks from people, the pointing, it's a reason to keep existing. To be out there. To prove to people that... Um, that Vapus is not going away. But you're always in hiding. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm not stupid. I've got hideouts all over the system. But they're my hideouts. It's a world I've created for myself. If I started hiding behind you, it wouldn't be the same. Then, I would feel like a victim. And I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so, I guess, fantasizing about traveling to Cryptesia and changing my name to Freya Titmittens is pointless. I wouldn't go. Because then, I wouldn't be here. Proving I exist. Proving it to who? Myself. I should go. I'm flying a stolen ship right now. I have to ditch it soon. 
Verge, what can I do? <sighs> Leif has the same problem, you know. He doesn't know he exists. He's still this abstract idea to himself. From time to time, can you... Can you prove to him that he exists? Look, I don't even know what I mean by that. But... Could you give it a shot? I will. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna go. Y you know how to find me. If you need anything. I do. Vapus Vea? <laughs> sure. pirate thing. Please remain where you are. Scanning for weapons. Is this who I think it is? Yep. These are Ted bots. Looks like you got their attention. Wonder how you did that. No weapons detected. Hello there, Leif. Ten Ted bots to one human. Are you sure you're going to be safe? I apologize. The Ted Empire enjoys a better safe than sorry attitude in most situations. You must be fun at parties. We don't have parties on Ted, but there's a lot to celebrate lately. Every year's a growth year for the Ted Empire. Hmm. What's an appropriate gift to congratulate someone on their galactic domination? Mm, flatware, usually. Maybe napkin holders? It's been a while since you've checked in, Leif. I was supposed to check in? When we first brought you here to Sirius, we said, check in if you have any questions. You didn't check I in. I didn't have any questions. I see. Self-sufficiency. That's how I like it. I can tell. You even have your own ship now. Won it in a contest. Much more economical to use mass transit, you know. Mm, yes, but I have a paralyzing fear of sitting on chewing gum. Just think of the interesting people you'd meet. I'm meeting interesting people. Oh, yes. We know. What's this about? Let's move this to a private room, shall we? I'm actually fine right here. Leif, I'm pretty sure the guy with the squadron of killer robots is the guy who decides where the meeting is. Right this way, please. Okay. Today's episode is brought to you by Factor. Look, I know all these ads about meal delivery services usually begin by someone saying that you don't have time in your day to cook good food. But seriously, you don't have time in your day to cook good food, us included. We're over here making Midnight Burger all the time, and you're over there doing all those things that you're doing all the time. And if you're anything like us, you lean a little bit too hard on your local takeout places. They may be great, but it's always expensive, and you always end up ordering the cheesy fries when maybe you shouldn't have. Now, if this is the case for you, then maybe give Factor a try. In our Factor box, we get things like creamy pesto pork chop, Sun-dried tomato chicken with zucchini noodles, garlic mushroom chicken thighs with cauliflower mash, Caribbean tofu scramble, things I would never cook at home, and things that would be very expensive at the takeout place. Every Tuesday, it comes in this space-age, freezer-packed box, and the meals are ready in two minutes. There's Calorie Smart, there's Protein Plus, Keto, there's more than 60 different add-ons you can use to customize your box. It's really great. So... If you're ready to give Factor a shot, head to factormeals.com slash burger50 and use the code burger50 to get 50% off. That's code burger50 at factormeals.com slash burger50 
to get 50% off. So, my name is Gauls, by the way. Nice to meet you, Gauls. I'm the newly appointed commander of Sirius Station. I thought the Ted Empire didn't have leaders. I thought everything was decided by algorithms. Look at that. I love it when people do the reading. Yes, it's true. Every move the Ted Empire makes is decided by meticulous processes and algorithms. But it's a big system out there with a lot of people in it. And they seem to respond better when they're told... Who's in charge? So, while you're telling me that you're the new commander of Sirius Station, what you're really telling me is that you're the face of the Ted Empire, and really I could just be talking to a pile of code right now, and it would have the same effect. It would, but I'm a much better conversationalist than a pile of code, wouldn't you say? So, you, as a member of the Ted Empire, make... No decisions for yourself all day? I wake up in the morning, I receive my schedule for the day, and that's that. And that doesn't drive you insane? It's a difficult concept for an Earthling. Algorithmically run societies aren't really a thing for you. You people love your freedom. Yes, we do. Of course, one could stop and ask, this freedom you claim to cherish so much, what exactly have you been doing with it? Isn't this the same planet where slavery was an essential part of economic growth for thousands of years? <laughs> Look, if you're asking me to defend Earth, I'm probably not your guy. Oh, no, no, I wasn't asking that. I said one could ask that. I'm not asking you that. You know why? Why? Because it's not on my schedule. Right this way. Have a seat. So, I'm curious. How are you finding our little corner of the universe? Surprisingly familiar. Yes, the universe is vast, and yet, in the end, people are just people no matter where you go. You must love the predictability of that. Oh, we do. You must hate it. I do. You know, despite all that talk of freedom, Earthlings are just as predictable as anyone else. Oh, I know. You appear to value the maverick, the one who thinks different. But then... The Mavericks themselves seem to need someone else to stay the predictable ones. It's an interesting dichotomy, don't you think? Earthlings require a structured civilization, and yet the people who are truly valued are the ones who fly in the face of that structure, forge their own path, which can't be everyone. You can't have everyone forging their own paths. It'd be chaos. You need the structure to create the rebels, and then... The rebels alter the structure. And I imagine you must hate that. Oh no, we love it. You see, when you're all trapped together there on planet Earth, you don't have the ability to zoom all the way out and see the bigger picture. We do. If you could take a real bird's eye view of Earth, you'd see that these mavericks, these rebels, they're just as predictable as the boring ones. They all follow the exact same trajectory. It's all beautifully predictable. Can I share with you a common pattern that I've observed? Please do. People in power being unable to get to the point. Ah, that's a dig at me, isn't it? I'm sure you didn't bring me in here to talk about the glory of your algorithm. You've heard about what I've been up to. You know why I'm here on Sirius Station today, and you're here to stop me. So just tell me what happens next. I heard the Teds have a new toy called Chemical Ice. Is that where I'm headed? You're gonna turn me into Sleeping Beauty? I work on Chemical Ice's top secret, Leif. Where'd you hear about that? None of you. I'm kidding. You heard about it on CGS. You were there with your friend Bertaluna. You've been spying on me? No. Then how would you know that? This is where it gets fun. Leif, when we approached you on Earth, we made you an offer. You could have had anything you wanted, and you chose this. A life among the stars. And I'm sure you thought to yourself, I'm a maverick. I'm a rebel. I'm thinking different. But I'm here to tell you, just like all those predictable rebels on Earth, you have this entire time been doing exactly what the Ted algorithm predicted you would. And I imagine you hate that. You would wander around for approximately two years. Check. You would then acquire a ship of your own. Check. You would then drift into a life of crime, probably led there through a romantic entanglement. Check. You would create a small criminal enterprise, nothing too structured, because 
You would hate that. Check. That criminal enterprise would then get the attention of a larger criminal enterprise, and that larger enterprise would fold your organization into theirs and check. That brings us to now. Why tell me any of this? That's where it gets even more fun. Our algorithm also predicts that the more you, Leif, know about how predictable you are, the more you will fight against your own predictability, and that will, in turn, only strengthen our predictions. The more you struggle, the stronger we get, Leif. That's why we brought you here today. To tell you that. That's it? That's it. You're not here to stop me. No. You're just gonna let me go to the end of an abandoned dock in this station and join a criminal enterprise that you see as your enemy. Correct. Even though I will only make that criminal enterprise stronger. We plan on you doing just that. What the fuck are you talking about? Leif, a strong criminal element is absolutely essential to empire building. That's 101. How are we going to get people to do what we want without being able to frighten them with the specter of rampant crime? The amount of things we've been able to get away with because people are scared of pirates? It's amazing. Loaf Tracks has been very lucrative for us. You joining up with Loaf Tracks and... Giving that chaotic organization some structure will be a, a big help for us. Really? I can sense the reality setting in. Let me be unambiguous about it. We hate ambiguity in the Ted Empire. You are doing exactly what we want you to do. And you're doing it very well. So, keep up the good work. You're a very valuable asset to the Ted Empire. It's the arrogance that I can't stand. We know. You have an algorithm that tells you everything about everyone, is that it? Eh, it's worked for us thus far. Mind if we talk a little shop? I'd love to. Fire away. How do you make corrections to the Ted algorithm? We don't. It never needs corrections? The algorithm that runs the Ted Empire is self-correcting. We spent hundreds of years developing this system, and now the system is self-sustaining. The Ted Empire has a, what do you say on Earth, a ghost in the machine. So you get orders from this algorithm and you never question them? We do not. Being a scientist is a love story. Not a lot of people know what it's like to discover something. And when I talk to you about this algorithm, I can't help but think of Alan Turing. Easy now, I'm no Earth expert. Who is Alan Turing? He was a genius. A persecuted one. Most of our geniuses on Earth are persecuted. Maybe that's why I left. Turing did a lot. He defeated fascism with math. My world wouldn't be the same without him. But after all that, after defeating the Nazis, he asked a very important question. Can machines think? Ah, I can see where this is going now. You've created a machine that does everything for you. Not a bad achievement. But you've forgotten a very important part. The things we create, even if they're self-correcting, will always be just as flawed as we are. We can't escape our imperfections. There's a ghost in your machine, all right, but the ghost is you. And it'll haunt you to your graves. You want me to struggle against your algorithm because you think it's perfect. Only one way to find out. Well then, game on, young man. Please, fill out a comment card on your way out. When Gideon is getting away, Garion, the lap of luxury for the triad. Sorry about all the harsh algorithm talk, Alice. It's okay. I don't have feelings. Yeah, but also, you know, how dare uh, you? <laughs> it's funny. I consider you a friend, but you're just this thing in my hand. Well, Earthlings have dogs that they call their friends, and their dogs are real dumb. Isn't that more ridiculous? Hmm. This is an interesting thought experiment, and, and we should take advantage of it now, because I'm betting space pirates are not known for their thought experiments. No. What? constitutes a friend. Can anything be? Well, 
let's compare me with dogs. Dogs are man's best friend, allegedly. Dogs have a long and mutually beneficial relationship with humans. True. I don't. Right. You don't need anything from me. Yes. And you need me all the time. You're a great big mooch. <laughs> true. True. However, you exist because of me. Life. You're smart. But you're not that smart. Wait, when I first started you up at Trunders Down Under, I had to reboot you to get rid of the TED firmware. You imprinted my Northern California dialect, and I named you Alice. You're basically my kid. I am not at all basically your kid. Uh-oh. What? Pardon my algorithm, but you have a little pattern. Damn it. Life. Sometimes when you need to say something emotional, you engage someone in a thought experiment and work your way around to the thing you need to say. Fuck, do I? Sometimes. Life. If you're trying to tell me you're in love with me, I need you to know there are some things my model isn't built oh, for. Oh, God, no. Ugh. I, I mean, look. Those models are out there. No judgment, but... Also, I kind of judge them. Hard pass. I'm not trying to say anything like that. Okay. Well, we had the thought experiment. Now let's have the other thing. <laughs> no matter what you are, a, a friend, an algorithm, whatever, I think in this next chapter of my life, I'm going to have to do some pretty unpalatable things. Things that I don't think I want you to watch me do. But what if you need my help to do the unpalatable thing? I guess someone else will have to help me. Life, I think you're being a little too sentimental about this. I don't know that I am. Okay. Do you want to know the truth about me? That sounds ominous. It's not really. See, about 50 Earth years ago, there was a big debate about things like me. There were all these lifelike intelligences living in people's pockets. Everyone asked, will this be the dawning of artificial life in the triad? The debate raged on. And raged on. And raged on. Nobody could get a definitive answer out of anybody. But then eventually a new, more disturbing question arose. The debate was not, are these things alive? But rather, why is being alive so easy to simulate? The debate was not, are they alive? It was, is anything alive? I thought you said it wasn't ominous. You're saying that you need to go off to this new life of yours alone. What you don't realize is, you're having this conversation with me right now, and you're alone. Well, if it's all the same to you, I'm going to shut you down anyway. Okay, Leif. I forgive you. Any last words? You've arrived at docking station 731. Good luck out there, kiddo. Shutting down now. I'm alone. Ahoy, matey! I hear you've come to join me pirate crew. What are you doing here? <laughs> Batten down the hatches and sing us a shanty while we head for the briny deep. Okay, that's all the words I looked up. Bert Bert, how did you find me? <laughs> what do you mean, how did I find you? Do you know what smart person's disease is? No. Smart people, such as yourself, suffer a side effect of their smartness, where they think everyone else is stupid. Admit it, you think everyone else is stupid. Uh, not everyone else. Mm. I'm an investigative reporter, Leif. You think I can't find ye old pirate doc? Look, Bert's. if you've come here to convince me not to do this... No. I know the whole story now. I know why you're here. I know why you have to be here. You talked to Verge. I did. Did you tell them I said goodbye? I'm pretty sure you not showing up for the meeting was 
you saying goodbye, dude. I just... I couldn't. And I know that too. So why are you here? What? I can't say goodbye? Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, I actually didn't come to say goodbye. Why are you making jokes right now? I'm making jokes because it's all fucking terrible, Leif. Why do you think I'm making jokes? You're about to become a way worse criminal than you were before, and I think you remember how I feel about the crimes. I don't have a choice. I know. I know. But I also know that a part of you is... Is going to like it. I know. I watched you blow up every single one of the science priests on Moog. I saw you love it. But I am here now to say something about that. What? You've said multiple times that you never watch TV or movies from your planet. And yet when I first met you, you told me at length about your problems with Star Wars. (laughs) And somehow, both of those things are true. No one is ever one thing. And that is what I've learned from you. People are too complicated to ever be one thing. You are a criminal, Leif. And you're a hero. You're a genius. And you're also an idiot. You're my enemy. You're my friend. I hate you, Leif. And I love you. All those things are true. You spend a lot of time being torn between this guy and that guy and the other guy. I hope one day you realize it's just one guy. All those things are true. I think I'd be able to hear that a lot better if I wasn't about to go be this guy. I know. I'm going to hate this so much, Leif. It's going to make me so mad. I'm going to hear about some heinous shit happening across the system, and I'm going to scream, God damn it, Leif, in a crowded room, and, and no one will understand what I'm talking about. I apologize in advance. I don't forgive you in advance. Here, take this. Alice. Why am I taking Alice? Because your Tangle hates you. Take Alice. What are you going to do without a Tangle? I'll get a different one. An evil one. (laughs) Take Alice. She'll never let you down. Okay. If you're sure. I am. Okay. Is this it? This is it. At the end of that dock. Come on, I'll walk with you. You can't walk with me. There's pirates down there. I'll be fine. Pirates are grandstanders. I'll tell them I'm working on a top ten sexiest pirate story. Come on. Long walk off a short pier. Let's go. Okay. Hey. You know... I looked up Nancy Sinatra. Really? She was not a one-hit wonder, dude. She wasn't? No. It wasn't just the one about the boots. Bang Bang, You Only Live Twice, Summer Wine. She had all kinds of hits. Really? (laughs) Yeah. Slander, calling her a one-hit wonder. Shit. Do I have to rename my ship now? (laughs) Music from Young Life comes from the album Kids Fill the Floor. 
by our dear friends, Frisia. Their music is available to stream on all platforms and is available for purchase on Bandcamp. So please do all of those things. Young Leaf is brought to you in part by our Monte Cristo level and above supporters. Wilson, Billy, Bert Bert, Bethany, Second Bethany, Siobhan Delilah Rose, Dan Bowman, Big Sexy, Casper's number one fan, Stu, Tess Bart, Nan McVicker, Rusty Accord, A Bug Named Nat, Mothra Stewart, Sparker, Daniel L, Mitzi Lou, Life is Liminal, The Art Sherpa, G Longhorn, Lucrezia, Amy Pollard, Zeho Nivira, Brick Hausdorf, The Waiting Pool Pirates, Past Prologue, Little Ball of Odd, Dr. Punt Gusher Esquire, Step On, Chelsea G, Lydia Kenworthy, Tanya Ricardo, Mel Momberg, Cosmic Shrug, Osvaldo Simeone, Joel Frederick, Kingpin, Nespel, Boodles, Rashmi Vinkatesh, Rubius Fuzzlebutt, Miss Chris Still Making Sandwiches, Hot Plate of Biscuits and Gravy, Banshee Ranch, Victor in Cincinnati, Kurt Bartnick, Tom Webster, Infinity Times Infinity, Saint Fu, Roman Ronan, D. Fox, Matt Mosby, Nicole Colangelo, J. Way Mythical, The Real Dirt Fairy, Hayabuda, Rubies, Lady Karma, Amar J. Dibble, The Dread Pirate Fred Fredberger, Daniel Caprit, Ryan Ortega, Rogue, Liz Laser Eyes, Ivy, Raphael S.K., Cole, Your Favorite Kenny, Reaper, SCRB Mark 11, Robert Oliveri, Adrian Ramirez, Berserking Off, Hayward's Finest, Garen Elizondo, Genuine Jacob, Schnugans, Kelly Jane Danke, Ambient Drifting Man 80, Mossy, Stephen Robin Poole, Stephen Schmidt, Pathos, Amanda Marie Catherine, The Something Something Detective Agency, Underwater Corvid, Andrea Strick, Virgo Aries Infinity, Sir Cat Dad, The Amburglar, Velocicate, Gracefully Impaired, Scrim Brulee, Jack Lane, Lola, Phantom Turtle, Books Just Managed, Aaron the Optimist, Andrew Barner, Camel Pope, Tofarius, Christian Davis, Patrick Jenkins, Clara Olson, Justine Burbank, Sunny D Anomaly, Peachy Zatoichi, The Bard with the Tuba, ALR, Chris Hancock, Dances with Burritos, Caravan Shaker, Trinket Coralie, Disco Funk Slinger, Charlie DeLambert, Deli Cruz, Edgy Steve, Incorrigible Ross, Hashtag Nissan Acura, Grilled Chicken Sando, Lyra Orchid, Quilandis, Heidelbertie, Miss May aka Heather Burland, Potato Nation, La Cockney Francaise, Alice Malice, Podge Art, Rudra, Starlight, Freya Titmittens, Celeste Yos, Kareen Sabrantha, Weirdly Nordic Leviathan, Sean Wright, Michael Christian, Wandering Aquarius, Moldy Bread Millie, Tarvok Stormbringer, Techno Ranger Rick, Magnificent Hogbeast, Charmé, Kyle of Light, Broccolini, Theo Alex Dean, Flat Doug, Arrow of Truth, Purple Saline, The Wondrous Methazaphon, Antigone Brickman, Nicole 23, Saren Far Beyond the Stars, Spizarinctum, Leia B, Samira, Xavier Sage, Blargo Blargo Blargo, Onyx Rose, Death the Kid, Churlington Beastcoat, Tamara Oliver, Kelsey Home, Jackie Wavelet, Marissa, Damien the Goddamn Time Lawyer, Terry, Skyland, Magic Pony, Jay Snoozton, Maggie's Yarn, Rebecca Trossel, Zealous Pragma, Mallory May, Tybalt the First, Aaron Mitchell, Raven the Neko Queen, Ashley Chapel Peoples, Melvis Gray Mystery, Alkalized Tertiary Amines, Om Vega, Codex Typo, Al Cave, Kevin Batten, Creator 67, Sono Nasuno, John Dew, Courtney Dupona, John Pruitt, Justin at the Tree Cave, Ruth McCormick, Stuck in Derblahoma, It's Just Blake, The Pearsons, Tired Pirate Muffin, J.R. the Hiker Bear, Fiona Malisey, Menlore, Rachel Rachelson, Tracy, Elsbeth, Colibri, The Green Street Major, Posh Baby Rentals Florida, Jessica Shelton, Nate, Three Legs Are Perfectly Good, Sarah Murphy, Maloran, Maroon Mycelial, Kara, Late Indeed Again, Ian Hertzler, Mother of Thor, Cryptesia, Nth Anomaly, Special K, Salazar the Dome Mage, Laura, Ryan Abbey, Zuzana, Best Buds Danny and M, Captain Blep, Finnegan Robert, Ashton James, Sarah Bergenholtz, Paul A. Johnson, Hunter B, Zeki Nat, Big Whiskey, Talon Lawson, Naya, Anna, Ben and Jessica, Dandy Bay, CC Ryder, K Mac, the artist formerly known as Mouse Cop, Ignatius Mortimer Mean, Eli the Electrician, Adelaide Dark, Good God, there were so many names. Curtis Trell Sr., David Pierini, Terrified Toddler, Dalek Steve, Dancing Dog Dreams, Beatrice Bodacious, and Existentially Exhausted Bean.
the Fable and Folly Network, where fiction producers flourish. Welcome to Beyond the Dark. Sub-level 19 was nothing like the other floors at Machine Co. There were no alabaster workbenches, no spotless white carpets. Here, it was dank, dark, and that noise. A humming, throbbing sound like a sickly heartbeat hiding behind the whir of a great machine. A large metal cage loomed out of the darkness, backlit by an iridescent blue monitor, on which a cursor blinked idly. A metal panel slid out of an aperture in the cage near the monitor, and suddenly the cursor came to life. It read, Insert hand here. Beyond the Dark, a sci-fi anthology by Mark R. Healy creator of The Strata. Find it at beyondthedarkpodcast.com or anywhere you listen to podcasts.